Okay, so if you've been following along exactly with me, then it looks like nine <coughs> columns, the way I constructed it, is, ab is about right, just based off of these uh, two vertical lines I started off with. Uh, remember, the distance between these is 5, and I'm, I'm actually shooting for uh, 4.2835. Um, so let's just see if we can find that same dimension <coughs> somewhere. And if you look at the handout, it looks like the left side of the dimension is at a point such as this, okay? So let me put one there, and I, I entered DLI for dim linear, okay? And then the second point is like midway up one of the, um, at, at the pitch diameter, okay? This is called the pitch diameter here, so. <clears throat> and you see if I click there that I, I actually do have um, the correct dimension. So um, I think what I'll do is I'll move my vertical li <coughs> lines to these points um, so I, I can keep track of them, okay? So let me move this one to here and let me just click on that and I'll make it yellow and from the midpoint of that line, the pitch diameter, I'll draw a line straight from left to right. Let me change that vertical line to yellow and then I can move it directly to the left. I'll, I'll snap to the intersection point and then move it to the end point and I can erase that line, okay? So <clears throat> that that's where I need to work, and I need to make sure I have all the appropriate lines between those points. So you can see I'm missing some lines from the root here. Um, so let me click on these, let me explode the lines, and then I will CP copy from the root here, and I will snap to the root here. Okay, and I'll trim anything that goes beyond the yellow line. Okay, and I'll do the same thing down here. All right, and here, and I'll even trim the yellow line itself. And let's do the same thing over here. Trim anything that goes to the left of this yellow line, or erase. We'll have to erase as well. Uh, oh, you know, maybe maybe we ought to wait on. Uh, yeah, I think we need to wait on the left side. So let me escape. And let me just. Uh, I had to undo. I wanted to. Because I was all in one command there. I'm just going to do the right side. And we'll leave the left side alone for now. I have to do something a little different with that. Uh, but since I'm happy with um, the right side, I'm going to go ahead and change that back to the appropriate color, and I'll just use MA for match properties there. Okay. Um, now the the left side, <coughs> um, what we're actually going to do is I'm going to erase everything to the left of that sloped line. Okay. And uh, let me erase the yellow line. And I'll erase, actually I can leave that horizontal line there. I'll erase the others. Okay. And <clears throat> let me use a circle from the center at this point, and I will draw a radius of 1.5. Let me extend that line to there. Okay. So that line will have an exact length of 1.5. And... I will draw this line straight down, and then I'll extend that line to it, trim off the edge. I could have used fill it with a radius of zero, it would have accomplished the same thing. Now let me use an ellipse, and now don't go anywhere, we're not done yet. The uh, internal threads are a little tricky, so make sure you hang out for that. And again, I want to copy the ellipse so they'll be the same on the top and the bottom. And TR, enter, enter. I want to get rid of that part. I can erase the vertical line. Let me hatch with the, on the appropriate layer that area there. Okay. So we've, <coughs> we've done the external thread. 
and now we need to do the internal thread. Now the internal thread you have to think about a little bit. What happens um, on the back side? You know, the, the internal thread part is basically what the back side of the external thread would look like. So just just think about that a minute. It's a little bit confusing. Let me um let me get on a, my construction layer and let me just draw lines. Now, if you think about the thread wrapping around the screw, um, this line on the back side would go from here to here, right? When you revolve this around, looking at the back, it would go from crest to crest, right? It, it rotates around. Same thing here. Um, same thing on the root. Okay, so <clears throat> That's what's going on on the back side, and that's, that's also what the external um, thread, um, I'm sorry, the internal thread for this external thread would look like. Okay, it has to match up. Um, so, actually, I'm just going to leave those there for now. So, the best way to, to get that <clears throat> without actually having to construct the uh, internal thread is to just use the mirror command. So, what I'll do is I'll type in mirror. And let me just select a portion of these. You can tell that our <coughs> dimension is 1.7835, so we don't need the whole <coughs> length here. Let me just get a good good portion of them. And I want to mirror this across. I want to use this very this vertical line here as my um, actually I don't mirror. Let me select and then I'll enter. Okay, and let me just pick a point in space actually. And I've got my polar tracking turned on, so I'm going to left click and I want to pick a point directly below it and then left click. Do I want to erase source objects? No. And then uh, since that ends already in brackets, I'll just press enter. And now I have a mirror image <coughs> of what I selected over here. Now, <coughs> you can tell that, let me erase these yellow lines. I didn't really need to bring these when I mirrored. If I take these yellow lines here that I that I made, just to show you that it's the same, and bring them over here, then you can see that they lay on top of one another. Okay, so that's what the external, uh, I'm, I keep saying external, the internal threads look like. Okay, now you can't just slide these over and connect them and, and, and be done. Okay, you'll notice that when this line leaves the root that this stops at the midpoint. So what you have to do is I'm, I'm actually going to turn all this yellow just temporarily and I want to match this point, the end point of the short line here with the midpoint between here basically the midpoint of this line. Okay, so that's what I want to match up. So I'm going to move all this and I'm going to select this the midpoint of that line as my base point and I want to snap it to the end point of that line. Okay. Now for, from from that common point I just want to draw a line straight down Basically, anything that's yellow to the left of this vertical line, uh, let me make it magenta so it stands out. Anything to the left either needs to be, uh, anything to the left of the magenta line that is yellow either needs to be trimmed or erased. Okay, so I'm going <clears> to <throat> erase what I can. Um, and if it if it extends beyond the magenta line, don't erase it. You need to trim it. Okay, so I need to to, to watch what I'm doing here. I was about to make a, an error. Okay, so let me erase those. Let me uh, <clears throat> trim. Maybe trimming first would have been the smart thing to do. Um, by the way, you don't need to make these sweeping trims because if <clears throat> if I if I choose this vertical line as my cutting edge and select enter, if I if I sweep, in other words, make a window across that, uh, I may end up cutting some of the red part, part out. 
okay uh, the red lines which I want to keep all the red lines okay so what you need to do is just single click so TR enter one time select the line as your cutting edge and then enter and then single click any line that